It's a random afternoon in 2002, and you're hanging with the boys. You've exhausted your PS2 library, Blockbuster's closed, and the hankering for smacking the hell out of each other from boredom is hitting nuclear levels. You need a way to unleash that rage, and with a quick peek to the lime-colored iMac in the corner, you see your salvation. You hop on Google, type in multiplayer flash games, and within seconds, you're met with this. The Field where champions are born. This is Slime Soccer, one of the many slime games that birthed from the delicious mind of Quinn Pendragon. While you had all kinds of slime games to choose from, Slime Soccer was by far the most popular one, followed by Slime Volleyball. They were played by millions, were a cultural phenomenon, were all mad nasty. This singular series is responsible for more smash keyboards and broken friendships than any other game from that era, right? I'd gladly trade the calluses on my palm from cheesing Mario Party to get my buddy Chris's fine China set back, which was recklessly destroyed in a passionate bout of slime soccer. It just had a way of summoning that inner demon inside you that wanted to destroy all that stood in the way of your dominance. There was no mercy to be had in a heated slime match, and both parties knew this going in. Blood would be shed. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. How the hell did a game that looked like this get so popular? Half moons with googly eyes on them? Dude, this looks like a fourth grader six period flash project. It doesn't even have any sound or music. The entire game is played in complete silence. In that same time frame, we had Tamale Loco, Rumble in the Desert, Alien X, and Madness Interactive releasing side by side. Flash games that really pushed the boundaries of what online games could look like and boasted gorgeous graphics as well as bombastic soundtracks. With competition like that, how did Slime reach the levels of fame that it did? Sure, it had a rough and rudimentary art style that paled in comparison to its more polished compatriots. I give you that. But what it lacked in textures and bump mapping, it more than made up for in distinctiveness. You're not going to mistake this game for anything else, even with a passing glance. That Frank and Garish art style is immediately recognizable no matter what, with the bright colors on a blue background looking like the most annoying YouTube thumbnail of all time. They say the best character designs are immediately recognizable just from their silhouette. So when you have entire characters that are nothing but silhouettes, you got a recipe for instant mind tattoos. That lo-fi style really makes it far more relatable than anything else from that time, because it feels like something you were me could make if we wanted to. It's attainable. Even the lack of sound wasn't a problem, because these were multiplayer games that were meant to be played shoulder to shoulder with your greasy, disgusting friends. The loud clacking of keys, glasses of Sunny D falling off the desk and smashing on the floor, and pained orgasmic yells were all the sounds you needed. You made the soundtrack. Backwards or something? No! Go! Ah! 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 <laughs> are so bad! There isn't a single composer on the planet that could match that level of intensity. Young Mickey Gordon better recognize. But what really kept people playing was the physics. Slime Soccer released at the height of the Havoc's ragdoll physics engine being implemented in pretty much every game possible. Half-Life 2 had it, Postal 2 had it, and one of my personal favorite games, Max Payne 2, had it as well, which made for some pretty sick kills. Flash games mostly had canned animations back then, pre-rendered states that weren't all too dynamic in terms of movement. So when I saw how fluidly that ball moved in my first match of Slime Soccer, I was hooked. It was so natural and so real that I felt like I was playing a soccer game right then and there. I'd never experienced this level of fidelity in a Flash game before, and it really felt like something from the future. That dynamic nature of the ball made every game unique and really interesting. That was yeah, oh, the dummy! No! Oh, 12 seconds to go! Man, if you thought veteran Quake 3 players were scary, you ain't seen a seasoned slime player, let me tell you. Because there's a super nerd who's been playing this game for 20 years that'll show you what real tragedy is. It's fun. Play it. Growing no gray, put a smile on my face on the worst day In a blurred haze, some blaze through the window Time seemed to stop, a final would spin slow Dennis Brown would sing notes to a heart So what's your favorite uh, thing to eat here tonight? Um, I'd say the popcorn. Okay. 